Today, we'll be going over our full archiving solution. This includes our Olympus 4H AE fully automated disk archiving system, along with the Disk Store 900 disk storage system. The Olympus 4H AE system has four drives, HP inkjet based printer, and up to 420 disk input and output capacity. It also has an embedded Windows based PC with the full archiving software bundle. The Disk Store 900 is a smart disk storage system with an embedded Windows based touchscreen computer and enough slots to hold up to 900 disks. Each slot has an LED light indicator that will tell us the location of each disk. We'll now briefly go over the Point Publisher NG burning software settings. We click Settings, Generals tab has a setting here where you can unload disks in the order that they are submitted. We can auto start ECR with server. If we click the defaults tab, this shows where the temporary working folder resides. The recording tab allows you to set the different recording speeds for the different media. The device configuration tab is where you can reset up your devices. The autoloader tab allows you to set consecutive rejects for any device. Once this happens, that device will become disabled. The bins tab allows you to set different media types for different projects that you're doing. This can be CD, DVD, Blu-ray, single layer, and dual layer. The individual configuration option allows you to set each input bin to have its own media type. So in this case we want DVDR and CDR. For our purpose we'll stay with CDR. Next we'll go ahead and start event controlled recording and go through the basic setup. We'll Put a name here for this purpose we'll go archive and we want to do an image mode it will automatically create a directory if it's not already created this is where your log files will be we hit advanced where you can select to remove the data or leave it in the ECR directory and you can set one or more copies. We definitely want to turn on printing and here's where you can set your burning speed for each individual job. We can also change the burning intervals. You can set it to burn in between different time periods. But right now it will burn as soon as a disk image is added to the directory. It will wait about 10 seconds and then submit the job. And that's it. Next up we'll go through setting up the point storage manager. This is the archiving brains behind the whole archiving process. We'll start off by first configuring a device, an archive device. We want to select hard disk NAS, point publisher NG ECR. Let's give the device a name, so ours is Olympus. And then we want to point to the ECR hot folder directory we just created in point publisher.
After that, we'll go ahead and create a storage vault. Consider a storage vault like an archiving job. So you can have many residing on the same software. For this one, we'll name it Archive Test. It's a standard file system. And we can uh, point to the data source. So this is the files that you want to archive or the directory you want to archive. For our purpose, we have a folder of PDFs. And you can tell it different uh, parameters in which to execute the archive. So we can go daily, weekly, monthly, yearly, or manual. For our purpose, we'll stay on manual. And now in the archive tier, we add the archive device we just created. And then set the different options. You can set the different media. For our purpose, we'll stay with CDR. And then we want to hit enable printing. And here you can change the label template that, that will be used. We want to allow file spanning. That means large files will get broken up into smaller files to fit the media. And we want to compare files after archiving. We want to create one log file per job cycle. And retention is not necessary because it's on uh, optical disk. So this is grayed out. We have three options for encryption. No encryption mode 1 and mode 2. So you can do that to what suits your needs. Now we have a storage vault set up. We'll now go ahead and execute the archive job and see all the different attributes we can assign to the files in the directory, our source directory. Attributes include file name extension, status of files, the file is new, has changed since a certain period, file version, etc. If the file is older than a certain period of time. The file has been accessed for a certain period of time. and we can base it off the actual file attributes. These are the properties within the file. You can archive based on if the file content has changed and if the files are larger than or smaller than specific sizes. Once we determine the archive condition, we can set the different actions. So if we want to archive the file, purge the file, delete the file, delete the file and the parent file, reset the archive file attribute, or just log a message, or we can skip to the next policy. So you can assign different policies to each different archive. Now we'll just hit OK for our test archive and execute. Now a disk image is being created along with a label file and then it's going to be dropped into that ECR hot folder that we created. Once that happens, point publisher ng uh, burning software will pick that up and add it to a job list and then automatically process that job.
The print label template could be set up with different variable fields and background images and text, whatever is suitable for each customer. In our case, we have different variable fields pulling from a DAT file that's also created by the archiving software. Once the archive is complete, we take the disk and apply a barcode label. This will ensure that we can track the disk through the storage process. We then take the disk and input it back into the drive. And then we also apply a barcode label to the case that the disk will be inserted in. This will tie the barcode of the case and the barcode of the disk together. We then go over and open our storage database manager and select add disk. We input the case barcode and the disk barcode into the fields as well as a unique name to track the disk. You can enter different categories, different departments, and different storage life of the disk that will be stored as well as serial number and you can add a brief summary of the contents of the disk. We can then read the directory of the contents of the disk. We hit save and now it's stored into our database. The next step is to store our disk in the disk storage system. We take the disk case and our barcode scanner, go over to the disk storage system, we select store disk, and then we scan the barcode that's on the disk case. Once we scan the barcode, it will automatically appear in the field. Then we save, and a light will indicate the location where we need to store the disk. When we want to take a disk out, we simply select Retrieve Disk. And then a browse function will appear where we can go through and select the disk that we want to take out. Once selected, we click Light Up and then enter our initials or employee ID number, something to keep track of who has the disk. A light will then light up and indicate from where to take the disk. We then remove the case, scan it, and then we also scan the barcode on the door to complete the retrieval process. To return the disk back to the disk storage system, we select Return Disk, scan the barcode on the case, and then we can go ahead and input it into the disk storage system. When the barcode is scanned, it will automatically appear in the barcode field. We then hit Light Up to tell us where to put the disk. We also enter our initials or employee ID number or some kind of identification number. The light indicator will once again tell us where to store the case. and we scan the barcode on the door to complete the return process. Close the door, lock it up, and we're done.